Sharon Lewin, thanks for your time. We're here in Brisbane with the world's leading scientists working on AIDS, scientists who have what you call a package of game-changing prevention tools and also new approaches to identifying an HIV cure. But what excites you about this gathering? So for a long time, we've obviously had condoms that prevent transmission of HIV. And several years ago, the discovery of tablets, oral prep or antivirals that tablet you take once a day or tablet that you take at the time of sexual exposure and it can reduce your chance of getting infected. But about five years ago, the um, and that it, great benefits of injectable prep were discovered. And that means an injection once every two months of a single antiviral drug, reducing the risk of getting infected by about 99%. So extraordinary advances. But now the problem is getting those interventions into places that need them, how we're going to pay for it, how we're going to roll these sorts of interventions out. Many, many countries, particularly low middle income countries, are unable to afford these sorts of interventions. So these are game changing, but we've got, and this is not new, we've now got the problem of how you implement it. Well, I'm going to ask you a question now about being a people leader, because controversially maybe to some, is to understand that the global AIDS movement has lost some steam. Lost some steam to the misperception that no one is getting infected, which of course can't be further from the truth, and also lost some space to the competition of news headlines and news attention. As that leader, what are you going to do to get us back on track? Yeah, there's no doubt that that's true. Um, though we are in a very different position now, 40 years after the discovery of HIV. However, um, HIV has not gone away and HIV is particularly challenging because it's a lifelong infection needing lifelong treatment. What am I going to do? Well, I'm in, in, in an incredible position as the president of the International AIDS Society. And now that we're, being, we're able to meet in person, we can really um, advance that convening power. We plan to really advance the advocacy power, specifically in areas such as stigma and discrimination. Educate, of course, is um, the most important thing I feel I can do training the next generation, inspiring the next generation that HIV is not over, there's much work to do, and all of those great skills that we are honing in our fight against HIV are highly relevant to many other challenges the world faces. You're also the founding director of the Peter Doherty Institute in Melbourne, so named for the Nobel Prize winner. What are some of the new understandings on the overlaps between how we fight AIDS and how we fight other diseases, including cancer? Well, the Doherty Institute has an enormous amount of expertise in infectious diseases, but also in immunology. And immunology is incredibly important for fighting viruses. And in the cancer world, there's been some very significant advances in harnessing the immune system to eliminate cancer, or what's called immunotherapy. And uh, we're collaborating a lot with the cancer, st cancer experts in seeing how we can tra translate those new treatments that enhance the immune system to also tackle chronic infections in particular, such as HIV, hepatitis B and others. I'm always really interested in what you're working on today. Does that still centre around finding a cure for AIDS? Yes, it still does. Um, haven't got one yet, so I plan to keep going. And the main focus of my research is on how to destroy an infected cell and also enhance our immune recognition of an infected cell. And we're, we're learning heavily or, le or we're leaning on, on advances in, in cancer heavily. We, at this meeting, we have um, some work presented on a drug called Neticlax. That drug was discovered because it basically induces cancer cells to commit suicide. And it does that by starving the cancer cells of a protein it depends on for survival. 